looks like the tropics are definitely going to try to wake up from their slumber, especially as we get into the last couple of days of this month, and then perhaps the entirety of the first half of August before we go back into a suppressed phase. And I'm watching for everybody, not only the Lesser Antilles, but from the U.S., British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, the whole Greater Antilles chain, into the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, and then potentially down the pike, the Southeast or the Mid-Atlantic United States. All the latest coming at you right now. Welcome back to the Mobile Weather Center, everybody. I want to let you know right out of the gate, if it sounds a little garbled today, if my voice sounds a little worse for wear, unfortunately, I guess all the work, all the travel, all the flying around everywhere quite literally has caught up to me. And for the last 30 to 36 hours, my body has been trying to succumb to a cold, and I'm fighting back. I'm fighting hard, just like the tropics are, against all all that sinking and subsidence that's been out there, and that's precisely what we're going to talk about. But I have all the latest information for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in on this Saturday, July 26th, 2025. I'm going to bring you the latest on everything we have going on out there, not only in the short term, but especially looking down the road once we get past August 1st. It does look a little sporty out there. I won't say full-on active because we are still battling what's called a fairly unfavorable background state, and I'll talk you through a little bit of that as well today, but there are a number of different signals that I'm going to be watching, not only close to us here in the United States, but especially across the main development region. So thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're brand new to the channel or have been kind of lurking in the background, seeing the type of information we put out on the Weather Center, if you like what you see, it would mean the world to all of us here in the Weather Center community if you consider clicking that subscribe button, giving that like button a little nudge. Let's share this information with folks we know would benefit from it, especially out there for the Leeward, the Windward Islands, the Turks and Caicos, and Bahamas, everybody in the greater Antilles, honestly, everybody on the north side of the Caribbean. To tell you the truth, let me know in the comments section where you're watching from, because if you've been a longtime follower of this channel, I'd mentioned way back in January, February, March, that our hotspots would definitely be the Leeward Islands and all the way through the Caribbean island chain up to the southeast or the mid-Atlantic. Atlantic United States, and that's kind of what we already have coming to fruition. So with that being said, let's get you to the information. This National Hurricane Center's homepage, we're back under calm, cool, and collected conditions out there. No tropical cyclone activity for the next seven days is anticipated, but we are watching not only for another signal close to home with another front that's going to be working its way down. It's actually expected to finally break down a bit of the heat wave that's going on for us here in the mid-Atlantic and the deep south as it moves off towards the east. But we've got not one, not two, but three different individual signals that I'm going to continue to monitor through the tropical Atlantic. And I'll get you on over to that right now. Let me bring my face back up to the screen. This is a look at our equatorial vorticity. So if you look out there, especially through the greater tropics, we have a tropical wave moving through the Windward Islands right now, bumping up your thunderstorm chances out there as it does so. We have another wave back behind there, but then we have multiple perturbations, as they're called, back up over Africa. One wave in particular right in through here. It's lost a little bit of its vorticity signature, but it is expected to splash down off the coast of Africa by about late Monday into Tuesday. And that's the one where some of our deterministic models are getting a little excited about, but especially our ensembles are really jumping on this thing saying, hey, it's going to battle through some hostile conditions, but if it manages to stay at least somewhat active as it traverses about 20 west longitude to about 60 west, right about where the Lesser Antilles are, beyond that, any further west it goes, obviously, of course, unless it interacts with a bunch of the terrain features out there, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, this thing has the chance of becoming our next tropical storm. But I'm especially watching this wave, this one, and this one. We have some quality MCS features out there across Africa that are going to continue to move off towards the west. You look here at your mid-level winds overlaid atop your infrared satellite, and you can very clearly see these tropical waves. One there, there's a little kink in the wind flow there. One here preparing to splash down, another one there with a little bit of rotation to it already as well, and then another one back behind that that our models are getting very excited about. So we have a lot to 
to watch not only in the next 48 to 72 hours, but especially beyond there. I want to give you a glimpse over Africa right now, and you can see these bad boys working their way off towards the west. Now, we do have a pretty good thermal low over northwest Africa. That's going to keep our Saharan air layer fairly robust as well. But given the positioning of our monsoon trough extending off of southwest Africa, as well as where the intertropical convergence zone has been kind of sandwiched, thanks to our subtropical high pressure across the Atlantic, these waves, just like Beryl did back in 2024, should stay fairly south. The problem is, because of such extensive high pressure and the dry air to the north, the moment they try to wrap up and pull off the intertropical convergence zone, the ITCZ, that's when it could get a little dangerous for them. And our models as of this afternoon, I'll tell you right away, have lost interest. These are our operational models, though, the deterministic models. You don't want to use those too much when looking two, 300 hours out. That's where you want to lean into your ensembles, which is primarily what I'm going to show you today. But you can see one piece of action there, another one right there that's got some really good spin to it already. And then this is the next one coming up back behind there, flowing with our African Easterly jet. The jet is pretty evident here as well. You can kind of see these upper level cloud tops being pushed towards the west as a result of that jet trying to gain some extra action. And if you're wondering where I said thermal low, if you notice, we've got an anti-cyclone, a little bit of clockwise spin going on over northwest Africa. That's your upper level flow associated with your low pressure that forms down at the surface, thanks to the tremendous amount of heating that you have going on out there. That's what helps to stir not only the monsoon to its south, but also helps to push those plumes of Saharan dust out across the Atlantic. So that's still alive and well, but it's going to be kind of a give and take. We've got a really good African monsoon, quality easterly jet, and that Saharan dust is going to stay just to the north of where our waves are trying to move. So it's it's kind of a 50-50 shot. I'm not saying this is going to develop, and I'm not going to be like some of the downcasters out there and say it's not going to because it's still very early. We haven't even had it splash down just yet. So let's go over your probabilities. Because again, the deterministic models, once you get about 150 hours to 200 hours out, they lose interest. The European model, for example, today had a fairly good looking wave. The first one that I'd mentioned, we're going to be watching closely, but it crashed right into our islands. So while that still ups our rain chances, the chances of seeing some significant flooding out there and some tropical like impacts, we're not expecting a named storm if it decides to ride the greater Antilles and stay over land and not meander over open water. But if you take a look at your Euro probabilities, and I'll get myself out of the way so you can see, at about 96 hours out, that first wave, once it comes off, this is now Wednesday morning, notice our probabilities are already getting up towards 65, 70%, and they're not done from there either. As it starts to slowly uncouple from that ITCZ, the monsoon trough configuration out there, that's where we start to see it push westward towards the Leeward Islands in particular. Windward Islands, I don't anticipate you're going to see too much from this, especially if it does remain a open wave as it moves towards the Lesser Antilles. But regardless, we want to keep an eye on this. Some model iterations, especially in our long-range ensembles, do think if it stays weak, it'll fly a little further under the radar, stay a little bit further south in terms of latitude. But as you can see here... Once we get to this next Saturday, this is next Saturday. Mind you, today is Saturday. So this is already seven days out. This is where we start to kind of cross the beams, blur the lines a little bit. Your probabilities stay fairly elevated, especially near the U.S., British, Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. I've got a lot of family, friends, and fellow viewers out there who have become friends in the Weather Center community watching from that area. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye on this, regardless of whether or not this becomes an issue for the United States. Then notice we've got another front that's going to be coming off. That's going to be a breaking down of our negative PNA, introducing another upper trough over the Great Lakes, the Midwest, with another front that's expected to eject over the western Atlantic waters. Whereabouts we've been seeing them several different times over, not only with 93L and its secondary iteration, but also with Tropical Storm Chantal earlier on this hurricane season. We've got another batch of probabilities trying to move in and increase in that general area as well. Well, 
it gets to the point where you can't even kind of detect which signal is which. We've got a little bit in the Gulf. We've got a little bit in the Western Atlantic. We've got our wave that's coming through the Turks and Caicos at this point. This is now the following Tuesday. We are well out into the future now, which is why we want to take this with a grain of salt. But then watch this. At 264 and 288 hours, we're already percolating once again down in the main development region. So there's going to be a lot of signals to watch. That's kind of why what I was, I should say, that's kind of what I was iterating to those of you who watched a couple of videos before a busy phase not necessarily an active phase i'm not saying we're going to have name storm after name storm there's the potential obviously otherwise our models would not be showing us what they're showing us but it does seem like we're going to be busy in the sense of there's a lot of different moving pieces we have to track at once things that could develop fire up cause some impacts for not only our caribbean friends down there but then especially as we get closer to the united states we'll have to watch very closely if i take you over to your ensembles here. I'm only going to fast forward out about 144 hours. I don't want to take you too far into the future because obviously, again, we start to lose that accuracy, lose that confidence. But if you look just off towards the east of the islands there, I'll zoom you on down in so you can get a better look. We've got a decent handful of our Euro ensembles picking up on at least, at least a tropical depression. We've got a couple of them indicating the potential for a tropical storm, and that's definitely still in the ballpark of what could occur. Again, though... East of 60 west longitude, we've got a lot of things that this little wave has to overcome. We've got a little bit of that wind shear out there, still some westerly shear. We've got a lot of dry air, not only provided by the Saharan air layer, but some of the wave breaking that we have, thanks to our highly strong, or I should say highly anomalous, subtropical high pressure out there. So we'll have to watch that closely. If you go beyond this, though, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you just for the fun of it. Let's go out in time a little bit further. We'll go 240 hours out. And you can see there it is. Not only are we picking up on that mid-Atlantic signal that could get picked up by our next trough, but then a lot of our ensemble members push it right through the Bahamas. And this is something we've been monitoring for for a while now. We did think that as we go down the road, especially into August, September, and October, we could see our greater Antilles, the southeast United States, and the mid-Atlantic being a hot spot for these things to try to make a run for and make landfall if they do decide to organize. I'm going to rapid fire through this. This is a look at our 12Z AI ensembles, the Euro AI model, showing a much further east position of our wave. As we break down our Atlantic high pressure, this bubble of orange here, that's your Atlantic high. It kind of goes into an eastward oscillation or an eastward phase closer to the Azores, and we open up that corridor through Bermuda and the east coast of the United States. That's ordinarily good news, but then if you fast forward just a little bit further and look at this bunch of ensemble members there, because of that trough I'd mentioned that's breaking down the pattern, we're going to be seeing higher pressure building in in hot pursuit of that trough as a little bit of cooling comes down over the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the northeastern United States. So if we go just a little further in time, this is why I want to watch closely, because look at how these ensembles continue to percolate. They steam up over those warm subtropical and western Atlantic waters, and then they suddenly shoot back towards the west, whether it being towards the mid-Atlantic, the northeast, towards the Manhattan, New York area, or even back towards Florida. The last several ensemble runs, and even some of the deterministic models, did have this thing trying to make a run for the Florida East Coast. And obviously, I'm not bullseye in Florida as a landfall site, but if there was any hurricane season here within the last several years that has the greater chance of seeing a East Coast Florida landfall, a bonafide landfall from a long track wave, it's this year, I would say. I would arguably say this year has the greatest potential for that. Just showing you very quickly now, we're going to rapidly go through some of these model panels here. I wanted to show you a little bit of what's happening across the MDR. And if you look, there's our Atlantic high pressure in its Azores configuration, allowing some of that clockwise flow to pull in dry continental air into the MDR. This is before that wave comes off. You fast forward just a little bit through time, and there's our tropical wave looking fairly juicy. It has a nice pocket of moisture from 300 to 700 millibars entrenched within it, but you know, it's still it's going to have a bit of a battle because notice as it starts to gain latitude, it's going to punch right into not only that dry air brought off of Europe and northern Africa, but that's where our Saharan air layer is as well. So we'll have to watch that very closely. It holds on to it. 
If you switch over to your vorticity, you can very clearly see where your wave axis is, but this model run in particular, it takes it right through the islands there. So even though we are going to see some impacts, this would be best case scenario for everybody out there. Tons of land interaction. This thing never gets a chance to get going. Manages to suck in all that dry air and get shredded by the higher terrain features of our islands. If I go back to zero Z, Notice a totally different song and dance. This thing lifts towards the north and begins to try to do something off the Florida East Coast. And then even further than that, notice we have another wave and then another wave. The 12 Zulu European model was actually a little bullish about that as well. Look at that. More cyclogenesis near the Turks and Caicos. So we're going to be watching very closely. Your wind shear in the Atlantic, not all that hostile, to tell you the truth. It's honestly going to be the dry air and the sinking air in response to that drier air conditions out there. It's the sinking that's really helping to shut us down out there. But because we have the Kelvin wave coming through, a little bit of the MJO beginning to pass across our base, and I do think that could try to reverse, which is why it's a bit of a toss-up. Notice I'm going 50-50 here on camera. We could see this thing develop, and I'm not going to vote it off immediately, but I'm also not going to say, yes, development is occurring because we've got some obstacles over the next three to five days that we have to overcome. Here's a quick glance. You can see those higher heights really holding it down out there across the tropics. And now higher heights obviously means warmth, but on the same token of that, when you have your higher heights, it usually indicates subsidence, a little bit of sinking going on to help induce that low-level warmth. So while we do have instability out there, it's not a perfect setup for this to go gangbusters and try to develop into our first long track feature of the hurricane season. It has the potential to do so, but we need to get a little closer in time and we need to see this thing actually come off the coast of Africa and plop down over open water for our models to get a better handle on it. I have your 500 millibar winds pulled up too because I wanted to show you as it comes off, it does do so with a quality finger of the African Easterly Jet. A lot of people don't talk too much about that, but this is what it does have going for us. Remember, this is 500 millibars. And as it comes off the coast of Africa, notice we have a really good pocket of not only difluence out ahead of it, but a really good jet max or a jet finger associated with the upper end of it, the north side of it. And that's where the bulk of your vorticity is usually concentrated in these tropical waves. So it has that going for it. Like I said, as it moves towards the Lesser Antilles on the 12Z model run today, it kind of crashes and burns for all intents and purposes because of the land interaction and then swallowing up all that dry, dusty air out there. So that's not really going to do it any favors whatsoever. This is just one last look at your vorticity. You can see it coming off of Africa, starting to wrap up, and it does look fairly amped until it hits the land there and then washes out. And then you can see another couple of bowling ball features coming off of Africa, and then two potential entities out there in the subtropics where our warmth around Bermuda is still concentrated. Finally, before we get ready to close out, this is what I think is helping to concentrate all this action out there. There goes your Kelvin wave, a weak pass, some would say, of the MJO. Not all that excited. It does look like it's going to stay relatively overhead until about the August 6th time frame before we have some very weak perturbations in the pattern that try to make it through. And then according to the Euro control member, our next major pass is probably going to be towards the back end of August. Now, granted, this is going to adjust. This is going to change. So take it with a grain of salt. If you take a look at the mean here, we have a lot of rising motion out over Africa and the Indian Ocean as well. So you don't necessarily need the intraseasonal forcing of the MJO right overhead all the time. It does help. It's kind of like a supplement, kind of like the pre-workout before your weight training session, but that's neither here nor there. Right now, we've got a number of quality signals we're going to continue to track, and I will let you know right out of the gate here at the Weather Center if it's something that we need to be concerned about, let alone prepared for. And right now, I'm just not seeing that. This is definitely something we want to monitor, definitely something we want to watch as we move into August. Climatology Logically speaking, conditions are only going to slowly continue improving. So while it may seem poor now, according to our models, things definitely can change as we go over the next two, three, four, five days. And that's that.
Thank you all so much for tuning in for today's iteration of Weather Center Nazario, the mobile weather center up here in North Carolina. Going to be flying back down to Central Florida this upcoming Monday. So just a couple more days away from home base, and then hopefully I can plant myself in the Central Florida area and get ready for the peak of the hurricane season and get you to more consistent content from the home studio and at News 6 to keep you, keep you ahead of what the peak season is expected to throw at us. So that's all she wrote, folks. I hope you've had a great weekend up to this point and continue to do so. We'll see you next time, probably on Monday, pending when my flight is, if not Tuesday, at the very latest. I'll keep you updated through community posts. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.